Okay, guys, um, I'm up in my little workshop. Uh, we're doing the last part of the uh, axe handle carving video. I uh, got my axe handle, axe head here, and then I got my handle here, and I did a little bit of shaping up here on the end, but and basically, basically that's what we're going to do is we're going to shape it and uh, fit it onto here, just like so. And uh, on another note, I did cut about a half an inch off the end of this handle too because it started to crack a little bit actually I think it was already cracked and I just didn't notice it my my fault and then as it dried a little bit it uh, cracked even more but we still got a nice swell on the end of it so I'm not that worried about that but uh, yeah I did shorten this handle up just a little bit this handles gonna be slightly shorter than I wanted it to be but that's okay it, it, it's still gonna work out just fine I think it's uh, actually still and you know what let me get tape measure and i'll tell you so let's see this axe handle is okay 13 inches long so it's a it's a little short but i was shooting for like a 14 or 15 inch one but that that's okay this will be fine um probably gonna take this shoulder and move it up just a little bit too after i fit the head i'm gonna try to keep set it up so the head doesn't fit any farther than about a quarter inch past the end and then that'll give me, oh, if it goes quarter inch past the end, I can make this shoulder just a, well, maybe a little shorter, not much. So it, pro it probably is about where it's going to be. I'll just clean it up and stuff when I get to that point. So I just wanted to update you guys. We're, right now I'm just working on the eye end, just carving this thing out. Um, I'm just going to whittle on it a little bit when I get it to just fit the head. I'll show you what it looks like when it's just barely through. Okay, so I'm just sitting here whittling this thing, and I got it to where it'll it'll just barely fit into the end of this handle. In fact, it goes in about a quarter inch, and uh, that's about it. And as I'm, and it's hard to do sometimes with a hewing axe, but as I'm whittling this handle, I'm keeping an eye on it, making sure it's nice and straight, it runs good and in line with this this blade. But at the same time. You got to remember that this blade's offset too, so so you're you're more or less trying to keep this end of it in line with the handle because if you can keep one end in line or at least the whole eye in line with the handle, then then the blade is where it is because, like I said, it's already an offset blade, so it's not like you're gonna try to line you're not gonna try to twist this and line this blade up that's just not the way it works so anyways I uh, got this kind of kind of set on a little bit so now it's just a matter of uh, putting it on and just got regular little more knife and then wherever you see the little tight spots on the handle you just whittle a little bit of material out from behind it until uh, until you get this handle on here as far as you want and uh, at least that's how I do it and eventually it'll fall on and you'll be right where you want to be with the handle and it's a slow process I'll admit but if you rush it you might be doing another handle all over again too, so you might as well just take your time and 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 work it, because uh, you know you're trying to get a nice tight fit. And that right there is, you know, that's just a beautiful fit. Uh, I don't want to take any more off off this side or this side. I'm just want to take it off these sides here and and fit it in. So uh, that's where we're at, and. Uh, I'll probably, at some point, I'll start getting a, I'll go get a piece of firewood, round firewood. I'll start tapping the end of the handle just to get it to go on just a little bit more and uh, make sure that this fit's still going to be okay. But, uh, yeah, I'm already playing around with it a little bit. And, and yeah, it's, it's going to be okay, I think. So let me go ahead and uh, keep working on this, and I'll be back with you. Okay, so I tapped this thing on. A little bit and you can see the line right there and on this side you can see it right there so everything 
underneath that line I'll want to remove and uh, that's how that's how you fit them you just keep doing that until you uh, until they fit on as far as you want them to and I'll, I'll just use my knife and I'll whittle it down until it's uh, until I'm even with, with where that line is usually do a quarter to a half inch at a time I'm not trying to uh, get too ahead of myself at this point if you would go a little bit deep on the inside in the middle of this handle it probably wouldn't affect it too much but uh, we're trying to get it as close as we can so we can uh, have a nice tight fit on the whole handle so uh, let me go ahead and uh, keep on whittling on this thing and it's not I'm not even in the camera with the whittling I'll have to adjust that camera here in a second but I'm just taking my knife and whittling on it it's not a big deal just like you would on anything else and then I'll tap the head back down on there and try it again This is a pretty small axe head. It won't take very long to get to fit on there that, that far. In fact, it probably won't take very long at all. So, yeah. And I just do that. Just kind of put it in there barely. Hit it a couple of times. With that just to see how far it'll go on and I just kind of look at it and check it and see if I'm getting a burr everywhere where I want it to and then I knock it off and uh, that tells me where I want to take some stock off And after you get it off, you just keep on whittling. So let me get back to you and I'll uh, show you what it looks like when it's almost fitted on. Okay, guys. So I got it at least fitted to here. Now I'm going to have to knock this back off, cut the kerf into it. And then while it's off, we're going to go ahead and there's a couple burrs on this axe head itself. Because as always, somebody hit the back of it with a hammer. And uh, so we're going to take all these burrs off and, uh, you know, just clean this axe up and make it look good again. There's a couple, a couple little nicks right up in here, too, where they've, uh, you could see where somebody must have changed the handle a long time ago. And they just pounded the crap out of the top of it to get it on to whatever they were doing. And then the bottom actually looks nice and clean. It's never been hit before at all. But, uh, yeah, we're going to go ahead and whew, knock this thing apart and do a good final sanding on this. And I did grab a 4-in-1 raft, and we'll probably use that to clean this up a little bit too and then sand it. And, uh, you know, just go a good once-over on the whole handle sanding-wise. Um, cut the kerf in it and hit the uh, burrs. And then we'll put it all back together. And I will, uh, I'll have to whittle a wedge out. I've got some poplar laying around here somewhere. I'll just split a piece off and uh, whittle a poplar wedge out for this thing too. So, so uh, yeah, let me uh, go ahead and take it downstairs. And it's a little bit weight forward. So, I don't know, I guess this handle could have been, <coughs> well... Could have been a little longer but not by much because it's weight forward right there right now if i add and this spoon weighs almost nothing if i add that to it and it it almost brings it back to where it should be almost it needs a little bit more weight than that but but you know what i i was playing around with it already a little bit because this thing's on here pretty good and I have a feeling I'm going to be holding it right about here most of the time anyway. So 
it's really not going to matter that much. Um, and sometimes that weight forward thing is kind of a nice thing because then you're not actually uh, using as much muscle. You're using more of the axe head. So, yeah, it is what it is. If I don't like it, I can always take it off and make another one. But uh, I think this will be just fine. Like I said, this is going to be one of the hewing axes that I take out west with me. Um, we're gonna. I'm gonna get another hewing axe. Uh, you know, with the uh, actual an actual hewing axe with the wedge on it, just like this one, American style one. And uh, I'll try to find one with an original handle on it, whether it be longer. It probably will be a longer handle, but um, it doesn't hurt to have a shorter handled one and a longer handled one. I have no idea what Haltbrooks would have put on this originally. I wish I did because that's probably what I would have went with. But, uh, you know, and if anybody out there knows, like, let me know because I have no idea what they originally would have put on their hewing axes. Um, but uh, I have a feeling it probably would have been about a 16-inch handle, though, instead of a 13-inch one. But uh, it is what it is. Okay, uh, let me go ahead and take this camera and stuff downstairs and... We'll knock this thing out and finish it up. Okay, guys, so I took the handle off of it. Um, you can actually see where it's got blue paint on it. So it's, uh, it's a pretty tight fit. Um, I'm going to go ahead and sand this whole thing down and clean it up. And uh, really all I'm going to use is sanding block and that uh, rasp. We'll just rasp it up and sand it down. But uh, we'll do that upstairs. First thing, I, what I want to do next, though, is I want to take this head. And I have a regular metal file here, right here. And all I'm going to do is I'm just going to set this thing up, probably lay it right on my workbench, and go ahead and uh, see if not. But we're just going to go ahead and file these burrs off these things. Um, I'm on my tablet again, so everything's a little bit uh, wobbly. But really, all I'm going to do is just barely touch. There's not a lot of burrs on this. I mean, this is a pretty good axe. But and like that right there, that took care of that one. And... There's another one right here. Let me get the smaller file. I don't even need to be quite that big. Kind of being careful not to uh, scratch up the head too too much. I, I don't really want it to look like I don't really want it to look like we filed it. I just wanted to clean this up a little bit. That's all. And then there's a little burr. Let me hit the top. top of that because it takes out some of them hammer marks. And then there's a little burr and I don't even know if you can see it on the camera but there's a little burr right here on this edge. And we'll go ahead and take that off too. This is where somebody hit it with a hammer is way up in here.
And it don't have to be too, 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 too clean because these things were pretty rough coming from the factory anyways. Um, they kind of rough casted them. That's why they kind of put the blue paint on it. They covered a lot of the things that they uh, didn't make pretty pretty on it, which is kind of ironic because nowadays you get a hand forged axe and you want to see that rough finish. And uh, back in the day, they didn't want you to see the rough finish, so they put a coat of paint on it just to kind of hide it a little bit, which is uh, kind of funny. thing I'll do while I'm working on it right now is this, this back side is supposed to be totally flat so if there's any burrs around it you want to take them off too which I just did so it's back in shape again um, so uh, basically I got to uh, just take this thing upstairs and um, work on that handle so let me go ahead and go back upstairs and we'll do that next oh one thing I want to do real quick while I'm down here is I want to uh, cut the kerf in this thing so I'm not gonna I'm probably not gonna show it but really all I'm gonna do is stick it in my vise and I'm just gonna take a saw and line it up and cut right across oops line it up and cut right across here and I will cut down three quarters of the way as far as the axe handle would go on. So this would be in my axe handle. I'll cut the handle down till about right here, top of my finger up here. And that'll be it. That's all the deeper I want my curve. Um, I don't want to go too deep and then put the hand, put the head on and then see my, see my curve out the bottom of my, uh, eye that, down there. That would, that would not be good. So, uh, yeah, so, and it's an approximate thing. I mean, you know, I'm not going to like measure this out. I'm just going to cut it till it goes down to about where I want it and I'm going to quit. So I'm just going to use my uh, folding saw to put the kerf in. I'm taking very good care to try to make sure my kerf stays in the middle of this handle. Um, I know the camera's kind of in the wrong spot, but I'm. Uh, <laughs> Lining it up just a little bit and then uh, checking it. I should say cutting just a little bit and checking it. And I'll do that a little bit, a little, a couple times. At least until I get started in there good. And then once you're in there, you're in there. lined up you just cut it and uh, stop when you want to stop <laughs> and finish cutting this through and then I'll show you what it looks like after I'm done okay so we got our curve cut in there and it's uh, pretty straight I got off just a little bit but uh, not too much you can tell it's off just just a hair ain't gonna hurt a thing though um, so and it goes you can I don't know if you can see that or not but it goes It'll go up the head a little bit more. I could probably go a hair deeper, actually. But, uh, in fact, maybe I will. I'll go just a hair deeper. And then when I when I do my wedge, I want to make sure my wedge is going to be short enough, too. So, uh, that's another thing we'll have to check. Let me go ahead and cut this just a hair deeper. Okay, so this will be good. We're uh, within uh, three-eighths of where the bottom of the thing's going to be or so so um 
Next thing I'm going to do is just take this upstairs and give it a good filing and sanding and just make it all nice and smooth and pretty and then we'll uh, fit the uh, head to the handle and wedge it. Okay guys, I'm back. So basically I'm just taking my handle and I got my rasp here and I'm just going to go over this whole handle with the rasp. Just, just smooth everything out and then I'll go to the smooth side of the rasp and go over the whole thing again. And then from there it'll just be uh, sandpaper. And I'm not really taking a whole lot off with this rasp. The only thing I'm doing is trying to take out all the tool marks basically and that is about all I'm trying to do so this really isn't going to take that long and if, it, if you got a hump or something that you don't like now's the time to take it out and you'll get that once in a while when you whittle it with a knife like that you'll, you'll get a little hump in there and you, that you won't like so, uh, yeah, take it out now or forever, we'll have it there, or not forever, but now I'm just, now's just the time to do it, if you're going to do it. And I, I still can't kind of hold it up and look it over and make sure it's going to be nice and even, too. This handle's got just a little spot here where I had rip out on it when I was uh, carving it out with the axe. It ripped it out just a little bit. It's only about eighth inch deep. I don't think it's going to hurt a thing. I'm just going to leave it. I'm not even going to try to. I might get in there with a piece of sandpaper and sand it a little bit, but there's always going to be a divot there. Okay, let me go ahead and keep doing this, and I will get back with you. Okay, guys, so got it all sanded up. It's uh, about as good as I want to get it. It uh, you can't really see the divot in here that bad. It's just a little one. So uh, nice and even and ready to go. It uh, fits down on this head pretty good now. Um, So we got we got a pretty good fit uh i do have to smack it a couple times with the hammer yet but um i'm gonna go ahead and do that here in a few minutes or actually i can probably seat it i'll seat it right now and then i think i'll wedge it tomorrow um it's getting late tonight and i'm gonna call it a day so you know what I, I think we'll just we'll just call it quits right here and we'll pick this up in the morning but anyways it's all sanded down and uh ready to go um, I am going to sand this head down too a little bit, just a little bit of sandpaper, just to take off some of this, a little bit of surface rust on here. And uh, that's all I'm going to do that also. So uh, I guess I will see you in the morning. Okay, guys, I'm back. Um, so we, we got the head and the handle here. And we're going to go ahead and uh, fit this thing on here. And like I said, it's pretty tight already. A uh, couple things we need a pencil and I'll show you why we're gonna use that here in a second and a wooden mallet or in my piece case a piece of firewood and we're just gonna take it on let this thing hang like this we're gonna take it on here and we're just gonna tap it a couple times and uh, that actually went on there really good uh, I don't know if you guys can, I'm not done, done seeding it, but I don't know if you guys can tell or not, but there is absolutely no gap around this eye at all. And this up here is almost perfectly tight too. By the time we wedge it, it'll be really tight. So anyways, now that we got that tapped on there, what I will do is on this bottom end right here, I'll put a pencil mark on both sides 
and then I'll tap it a couple more times and see if that pencil mark moves. And it did, it moved about a sixteenth, so we'll do it again. What we're trying to do is seat this thing on here until the pencil part mark stops moving. That way you know you got it seated all the way down. And we almost got an eighth. Okay, that's probably it. So now we got it seated. So next thing we gotta do is we gotta take our wedge and wedge it. And this wedge is way too big for this thing. So what I'm gonna do is I will put it in here and mark it to about where I wanna cut it off. I just set it up so that it covers the whole thing and then I put a little mark at the end and then you just cut it off at that mark or whittle it off or whatever you got to do so let me go ahead and get my pocket knife out here and we're going old school again today my two dollar boy scout knife and basically, I'm just going to uh, set this thing down on the workbench and score it. And this is all eyeballing, too. I'm not measuring anything or anything like that. And then after you score it, Should be able to snap it with any luck. Okay, it's not going to snap. So, oh, there we go. So, now we got it down to length, or down to width, I should say, and it fits just the way I want it to. Now the other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take this knife. I'm just going to go like this one on on these on the thin end. I'm just going to do a little on each side. So there's it's just a slight taper right there. It uh, it'll help with the whole process then you just set this thing up and grab my mallet again here just tap it a few times until you get it started in there the way you want And then once you get it started in there, then you got to set it down on a high, hard surface and just tap the crap out of it. And uh, that's hard for me to do. I've got my regular camera here, but I'm going to take this wooden block and lay it down on the ground. A piece of oak. And... Here. Just take the butt of our axe and stick it right down there on the wooden block like so and then we'll just tap this thing in and I don't expect to get this thing to go in there all the way at all um, because it's already pretty tight around the eye. 
we're not even in there that far yet. Actually, this is going to be a very good fit. It's mushrooming over the eye just a little bit, which is what you want. Then after you tap it in like that, you take your pencil again and you make a mark on the top of your handle on the wedge itself. And you tap it again. And if it hides your pencil mark, then you know you're not, you know you're still going. And you just keep that doing that. Until it goes all the way down. And once you get some experience, you'll uh, be able to tell if you're close or not. And we're pretty close. I'll put another mark on it since we hid that mark and tap it again. And I won't put any steel wedges in this because if you do this right, it won't come loose. And if it does, you can always add the steel wedge later. But, uh, and it, my trick is, is I always put these together dry too. You see a lot of guys rub linseed oil on them and then they put them together. I put them together dry and then I soak them in linseed oil. And it actually makes that thing swell even more and it never comes out of that eye. down even more. Okay, well, we got it there. It's not going any farther. And yeah, it mushroomed over. I don't know if you'll be able to see that in the camera. Let me move the camera back up. I don't know if you can see that or not, or tell, but it's mushroomed over on each side just a little bit, which is cool. Okay, so now we'll take this and we'll cut this wedge off. And I think I'm gonna leave the wedge just a little long this time, just because of the fact that uh, we whittled this handle green. And although it, it feels dry, and I think it is dry, just in case it's not, I'm gonna leave it a little, little bit long and uh, in case we have to drive it down more, we can. So let me just uh, set this thing up in the vise and we'll cut it off with the saw. And I will uh, actually just kind of the camera this way. And you guys can't really see it anyways, but I don't know how you can, but maybe. Got a bunch of little blocks here I'm putting under my camera. I'm just gonna lay this on the bench just like so. And just cut this thing off with my saw. And there you go. And I left it, I left it just a little long in case we have to tap it in a little bit more. I'll uh, try it again in a, you know, probably a week or two. But uh, for right now, this thing's done. Um, we're gonna sharpen it next. Uh, and as far as the sharpening goes, there's gonna be a lot of sharpening. I'm just gonna use a couple, a couple different regular files. But it's already got the bevel on here, so it's so it's that's kind of nice. So basically, all we're going to do is 
lay the file on there so that it lines up with the existing angle and, and just file it until we come down to an edge. And we don't file the back side of this thing at all. Uh, somebody has kind of slightly hit the back side of this just out here on this edge with a grinder. Probably whoever whoever was trying to sell it did that just to make it look like it was sharp. Well, we're going to file this side, which is not the flat side, the angle side down until this until that is gone. So it's going to take a little bit of sharpening, but uh, we'll get it. And uh, then this thing was done. I'll put a coat of linseed oil on it, and uh, and we'll use it. So uh, I just wanted to uh, say thank you for uh, watching. Um, like, share, and subscribe. And uh, I think this is the end of this video. I'll post a picture of it all sharpened up and the handle um, with linseed on it, oil on it here at the end of the video, but. Uh, I'm not going to go over the whole sharpening thing because it's pretty simple. I mean, I just, I clamp it down on my table just like this. And these ones are easy. You don't even have to flip them over to sharpen the other side. I just clamp them down on the table, put my file on there till, till I feel that I'm on that edge and then just keep running it across until I, uh, until it's sharp. So, uh, yeah, there you go. Halts Brooks. Hewing axe slash carving axe. Um, I'll add this, this to my collection. Um, yeah, maybe I'll get my collection. I'll take a picture of it, and you guys can see them all at the end of the video. So, or maybe I'll just do a video on them. I don't know. But anyways, thank you for watching. Like, share, and subscribe. And uh, hope you guys keep watching. And thank you.